another track podcast and we have another celebrity with us how did you come into the real estate industry what were you doing before this and so on but i almost wanted to give up and take up a job i thought i would no more oh, really? want to i no more want to be in any form of uh, business i think alpesh i want to start a new club and let's do a private club and i said nana dad aap kuch ke kaam chhodo and i had this beautiful flower on the road and that was a gulmohar flower or how did you think of creating a golf course in city like amdabad those days golf is something i can venture into and this will some way support my real estate you achieved this huge milestone of creating uh, this golf club after that you went on to pursue your executive mba True. to harvard another track podcast and we have another celebrity with us from the real estate fraternity of the city today we have with us mr alpesh parikh of gulmohar greens golf and country club alpesh parikh a civil engineering a graduate from birla vishwakarma mahavidyalay and harvard business school alumni founded gulmohar greens golf and country club in 2006 this nine hole par 36 golf course features a 5 acre driving range and offers premium golfing experience with luxurious amenities with over 30 years in real estate construction and hospitality industry alpesh's expertise spans over residential and industrial projects he serves on amdabad management association's governing council is a joint secretary for the red cross amdabad honorary treasurer for the indo japan friendship association and a board member of indo canadian business chamber he mentors students from edi saint kabir business school and iim amdabad alpesh also runs gulmohar india education foundation a school providing basic education to 60 underprivileged children of laborers working around the golf club alpesh bhai thank you so very much to coming for this uh, track podcast we have been planning this since such a long time and finally the day has come Thank you Anand in fact it's a pleasure I have been following your podcast and I love them you really get things out of people here so I'm really scared that I don't know what I'm going to do but I'll be very happy to be here and I'm equally excited because I know you have amazing stories to share I hope so all right okay to uh, just uh, get uh, uh, get going if you can just let us know and our let our audience know how did you come into the real estate industry what were you doing before this and so on All right, so Anand, uh, this goes all the way back to the early '80s when my father, Trilok Bhai Parikh, actually uh, ventured into real estate, and that's how we diversified. From we were doing is basically printing and publication. We used to run a publication house called Parikh Jala Prakashan, Parikh and Parikh Prakashan. So from that, Dad, being a professor of economics uh, and banking and logic, he realized that uh, India is never going to grow land, but the demand for land will always be there, and hence by the simple nature of demand and supply. land is something which we would always value and the valuation of it will keep going higher and higher and that's how he started the business in early 80s i did my engineering in 1995 and was a natural progression to get into real estate but since i was a civil engineer construction was obviously had to happen so from simply doing pure hardcore barren land real estate we diversified into real estate and a little bit of construction and yeah the journey moved on from that point onwards Wow that's amazing so your father was a teacher absolutely um and he also like you know then he ventured into investments of land i also know that he is one of the early founders of uh, one of the well, like the first founders of karnavati club uh, the one we see on sg road today how did he manage all this like you know so what would have been the challenges that he would have faced so that has always been associated with lots of clubs he had a stint of about 7 years with sports club then he was with uh, Rajput Club for about 15-16 years from a joint secretary to the president. Once he retired as president from Rajput Club, he wanted to start a new club. Right. And I remember this was sometime in late 80s, 89 or something, and or 90 perhaps. And I remember he telling me that uh, Alpesh, I want to start a new club and let's do a private club. And I said, Nana, Dad, आप लोग तो कि काम थोड़ू थे. I mean, you know, for me. I never could associate at that point in time club with hospitality. Right. And that's how in fact Karnavati was born. He's the founder member. His membership number is 1 and he's the one who thought conceptualized and started Karnavati club today. A club we all are in awe of and look forward to. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um Alpesh so that is your dad's journey. How did you like 
तुम्हारा पहलो प्रोजेक्ट द रियल एस्टेट प्रोजेक्ट दैट यू वुड हैव स्टार्टेड विच वन वॉज दैट हाउ डिड यू कम इन टू दैट हाउ वट इज इट कॉन्सेप्चुअलाइज वॉट वर द चैलेंजेस दैट यू फेस दो डेज गेटिंग इन टू रियल एस्टेट इंडस्ट्री Oh, wow I I had the most amazing journey I would say in real estate so I finished my engineering in 95 uh, September I think October is when I joined uh, dad's business we already had a parcel of land uh, in village Kolat and Sanathal uh, we had recently at that point in time sold a large chunk of land to uh, Sri Purushottam bhai uh, of Goel and they had done the Goel water park and through the uh, Uh, profits we had made we had made bought lot of uh, land parcels just across the road right and when i finished my engineering and joined business that said our a zameen and I put in a project so i we obviously went to kamal mangaldas and devendra besha who were our uh, principal um, architects towards the project and we came up with this scheme called gokul rundavan now dad was always into real estate so he had no real uh, experience with hardcore construction and doing a project of this scale i was a fresh engineer who had not been under services of anyone not learned from anyone all i possessed was the theoretical knowledge and unfortunately 95 was the time of harshad mehta so harshad mehta happened the um, the sensex crashed um, everything was down everything was moving southwards and here i was a young entrepreneur joining father's business and wanted to go north when everything was just moving funneling to the south and and i remember the the early days or or many years at at uh, setting up gokurunda and was is the same time just for reference purpose when kalhar happened so right. when kalhar happened the same time gokul rindavan was conceptualized and made right. i remember going to kamal bhai's office and seeing uh, plans of kalhar on one side plans of uh, gokul rindavan on the other side and kalhar kicked in and and did wonders for itself uh, uh, navratna construction did something brilliant and we on the other side were we were really struggling and i remember i was i was this novice engineer who in the morning uh, go to the site and didn't have enough money to employ more engineers would have one or two guys who would work for you so i would be the site engineer who will give the line to build something later part of the day if i had to check a bill i'll become the bill checker then by afternoon i'll go back to office and now i am the guy who's also going to pay this person so i was everything from a site supervisor a storekeeper to a bill maker to a bill checker to go back to office and become an accountant and write a check and make the payment so it was a great learning um, i would say when Absolutely. i retrospectively look back that that's how Gokul Rindavan started and and uh, we were very ambitious at that point in time to put up a scheme in about close to about 150 to 200 acres of land at in those mid days. 90s yeah. so that was a huge parcel of land um, that we were wanting to develop uh, unfortunately we struggled for many years putting in the infrastructure and getting the right clientele to come in uh, to come and in invest with us and it was only in i would say the early 2000 23 when things started moving finally towards the north and we were able to do a lot of things uh, it, at gokulundan and that happened to be my first uh, real estate construction venture that i started wherein i made quite a few homes weekend homes for people in between i did some odd renovation jobs did a few friends uh, interior designing went on to do some work with troika for this is all their professional office, or this is all, all just oh, okay, all nice. professionally okay so there was all those small time contractor jobs that you do take up uh, which i did for troika for their office uh, building some odd interior job for a friend who is getting married and wanted a whole house to be revamped and you go out and help them and do it professionally i ended up doing a a, a 64 um, mid low segment scheme also near uh, um, shamal someshwar ni aju baju mai is where i put in a scheme we had three four other partners with us something which i never enjoyed doing i would really resist going to the site also at times because i felt that was not me that was not my calling not my liking so i sort of did one and walked out and then just kept on doing things which would make me happy end of the day but i'm sure all this little small experiences that got you a lot of expertise the last mile expertise of including execution of uh, interiors and so on which would like you know come handy when you were building up uh, gulmohar uh, golf country club so we'll come to that but before that i want to ask you uh, was there always your aspiration ke mara real estate ma jaau just since your father had real estate background 
or you had some other aspirations before you came and you uh, created GV? Uh, to be honest, no. I, I, from a very young age, I would say I was a just a little above average student. I was not like those brilliantly, uh, exceptionally good ones. I was not average, just beyond a little bit above the average. Okay. But and and I always was fascinated by land parcels because from very young age I used to see. Uh, probably when I was about eight, ten years old, I used to see dad and the various types of lands he would invest in, in and at times travel with him over weekends and you know understand or just overhear something that is talking to someone so that was something which always fascinated me i was always interested in doing mm -hmm. that but i had no real uh, talent know how or knew anything to do so i basically started from scratch one did everything on my own and those forming years have later on really helped me in doing a lot of bigger things in life post the first 10 year phase where I struggled to an extent where I, I still recall where I almost wanted to give up and take up a job. I thought I would no more oh, really? want to. I no more want to be in any form of uh, business. I think I don't want to be an entrepreneur. I might better out uh, be better off going and working for someone, some industrialist, some big shot guy, and just be happy to draw a, a meager salary, go home, and and be um, happy Satisfied, with it. Content. So yeah. So, Who knew what store uh, like you know absolutely. fate had for you in the absolutely. store? All right, so uh, while so now you've done a phenomenal work with regards to building this golf course, uh, which is uh, which was one of the first golf courses uh, during those days uh, in Ahmedabad, and I understand there is some interesting stories of how you conceptualized this golf course and how the idea came uh, to your mind. If you can just tell us about how did you think of creating a golf course in a city like Ahmedabad those days? Sure, so let me let me go back to a point in time when uh, Dad started Karnavati Club. Right. Um, he thought conceptually started, became the president of the club and finally by 95 he handed over the club for others to uh, take it forward and he was still on the managing committee but he was no more actively involved and he used to keep telling me from mid or late 90s that Alpesh, let's do one more club. We have so much of land bank. We've already started a scheme called Gokul Rindavan. And in our master planning also, we had put in a club in about close to some 90,000 square yard of land in that uh, 150, 200 acre project. We had planned a club uh, that we would make if the project was successful in a really large uh, chunk of land. And he used to keep pushing me that, Alpesh, let's do a club, let's do a club. And I always felt Anand ke, there was no USP to it. I said, Dad, even if I crib about that your Karnavati club is not designed proper and half the things are basement and you keep crisscrossing and doing various activities and it's it's not just ideally how a club should be looking at the best of the clubs across the world I will still go to Karnavati club and play table tennis or badminton or billiards or tennis because it's so centrally located I will still go and take a dip in the pool at Karnavati club and would never wish to come to Bulmore uh, where it stood later on Correct. or where Gokul Rindavan was at that point in time because we gen absolutely have no USP to this mm -hmm. project. So, while at the back of my mind there was always this idea that we want to venture into a club, I didn't have anything that I could sort of hook onto and uh, build a club. And it so happened that for every good thing or bad thing, I, I mean, I, I can laugh about it now, is that you have a lady's hand. And it so happened early February uh, 2005 and I I happened to on a normal days I would go home for lunch uh, go back to office later on and I recall that particular day Niyati my wife and I had a big fight um, just around lunchtime and we fought so much that I was so frustrated and I said that you know hell with it I don't want to go to work I don't want to go to office I'm not going to come back home and I'm going to just leave the house unreal uh, absolutely unreal and, and I was so angry and I just left the house and I, I started driving aimlessly on the uh, Changodar uh, road. Uh, at that point in time, it was just a two lane highway that we had. And my very, very dear and my chuddy buddy, my friend Pranav, uh, used to run a factory there called Parik Packaging. It so happened that I was driving on that road. I had just about crossed uh, Parik Packaging and Pranav was in an Innova on the opposite side and he saw me, waved at me, called me up on my mobile and said, to can I said, I said, Kaseni emerge. Okay, okay, wait, I'll take a U-turn and come. So he goes ahead, takes a turn, comes back. 
let's just drive a ghost in my car and say iske chal upar tari jod aao tu tu je karto hai we'll do together because i also really have no work uh, um, in office it was about late afternoon 4 o'clock or so 4:30 and we said all right sir so we start driving you generally confide in your friends i tell him ki mara out tha you know abhi baat mein jhagdo tha and you know, really nothing big in it but still you're just trying to speak it out and then we talk about 100 different things from work to family to friends life all, all about it i had a son then abhishek so we spoke about him and so on and so forth and we were just about to reach uh, bavra and um, i still remember just about climbing up that bridge mm-hmm. of bavra and he just happened to mention kitne khabar the munio hi agar golf course kari raha tha i said yeah i know munish keeps telling apne cricket ramta hai sports club mein tari mm-hmm. normally does mention that uh, he's doing it but i think that's going on from last 2 3 years and i'm not even really sure whether it's come up or not to ke chalne ne phone kari hai bavra thi jagar kaise ke ke last time male ho tar kehto to ke we could you know peep in and have a look so we call up munish munish says ke jo bhai um to hamare bada kenya na investor ne bodu che we really don't show this project to anyone so far but since your friends i will let you know ke where it is and i'll call also someone up there so you know you can go there and they'll let you see the place done fair enough let's do that So we start driving further, cross that, cross the Kerala GIDC, and get in. And it was an infinite road. You keep driving on that single road mm-hmm. till Nal Sarovar almost. And we reach uh, Kenswell at about five thirty, quarter to six. Winter days, February. Almost and dark. So it almost starts getting dark, and and we were on, which is now the present hole number ten. and we drive right up to the grass touching mm-hmm. the grass i park my car get down on the golf course and i am bowled over so wow this is something this is so beautiful i mean this is exceptionally well done well manicured mm-hmm. uh, they had just made about two or three holes till that point in time and was completely floored and i said boss pranav papa has been telling me to make a club and i never had this usp how about i build a golf club and now i have a unique point a unique selling point for people to come to me because if if somebody could think of doing something 50 60 odd kilometers away from the city center i have land parcel which is just about 10 kilometers away now all of a sudden there was like looking so, like so far away is like true. looking so, so close so there is something that if somebody can do this so far, so far and i'm sure they have thought about it so i do not need to reinvent a wheel somebody has invented it i just need to refigure it reconfigure it bring it closer to the city of amdavad and i could be the one who could be doing a golf club uh, in the city of amdavad now that fits in the bill because that's now a club what dad wants so i'll have everything that what a karnavatis and rajputs and the sports and the ellis bridges of the city have but in addition i'll have golf dad has already made a big name in the club fraternity so i'll get his help in as far as club is concerned correct golf is something i can venture into and this will some way support my real estate as well is, is what i intend to do in and around this place and so we keep talking about it we come back i come and share it with niyati she is excited by evening jagdo pati ko they were both super excited there's a new project that we could think of run it through dad dad is excited he in fact is so excited that he goes out and registers a a club called gurjari resort private limited the next one week there's so a the club, club was originally going to be named gurjari gurjari resort Gurjari Resort Club Private Limited that okay. was the name of the club resort also in club also so that's what it was named also all right and it was registered also by that name uh, by march uh, it was holy dhureti and i remember i went to uh, gir and somnath again with pranav ami and niyati ami four of us had gone with our kids to somnath and uh, gir and i remember we talked more in detail about this project because it was just a fortnight and since this was happened we thought we should do this and it's a great project mm-hmm. and they sort of also asked me that this is something you could probably you know venture into and I also was quite excited that yeah why not why why shouldn't i so the next thing was ki vi rite karwanu how does this happen and hence the first call was to munish actually ke boss they so kare you know like yeah. ask the competitor if at all that's a competition or right. ask a friend who could be a competition as well and unfortunately for munish was probably not in a position to share details uh, in an open fashion so he just went around and said ke kenyan investors then we have somebody who is designing it and this that and you know but 
never came up and gave the correct uh, information so i come back and uh, run it through dad ke dad au che for you give me a month give me the month of mid march to mid april and i will travel across india and let you know whether this is even a workable project or not because i am clueless i'm excited but i don't want to take a blind jump into something Correct. because as we all know golf is expensive that that was a rule everybody thought that golf is only for the rich and famous and i said i don't want to do a golf club which is only for the rich and famous i want to do it for the general common mass i want to make golf so much economical and doable that if somebody can afford to go and say um, have a dinner in 10 days in a restaurant go for a movie then they should be in a position to learn golf so it has okay. to be brought down to that level as far as the cost is mm. concerned and that led me to travel across india i went to delhi i went to bangalore um, went to mumbai uh, for weeks together i'll go to a golf club meet the golf captain meet the golf manager try and understand what can be done parallelly keep writing emails to uh, people around uh, the world because i needed to find a golf consultant who could tell me what could be a cost of doing this i remember my first in fact anand the very very interesting incident that just crossed my mind is that i i remember writing a letter to a golf architect called carl olsen mr carl olsen is a golf architect at that point in time in um, scotland okay so i realized ke bas khabar nahi koni pass kar raha hu golf course bana ho chhe only a golf architect or a like an architect can tell you a project cost shoot yeah. hawani chhe so i write to him right opening line at khoti lakhu to ke i am a budding golfer je tu hato ni maru golf was limited to my mobile phone playing golf <laughs> on the phone i said i am a budding amateur golfer and I'm, i want to do a golf club in the city of amdabad we are located here and i have 10000 square meters of land and i want to set up a nine hole uh, par 36 golf course and uh, could you tell me your professional fees and a cost of doing this etc 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 i write a mail and keeping my fingers crossed ke boss koi to mane jawab lakhe and then i can figure out what is happening and i've still saved that email in one of my files taken a print out and saved it because i realized ke i i was clueless about everything and he writes a beautiful mail to me saying ke these are my fees i'll travel business class mara char mano so aavse jode jene economy ma phase mari fee at that point in time converting pounds to rupee was somewhere around 3 crore rupya thase mm. and i'll design it and in the last paragraph he is written that uh, i think you have mistaken alpesh but you will need at least 1 lakh square meter so i believe in your mail you have missed out a zero in typing oh boy to which i wake up ke oh, okay 10000 meter ma golf course na tha minimum lakh meter to joiye jo golf course karo pan hoy to so even my scale was not right i could not even visualize in the form of scale ke shu karu joiye ke to it changes the entire cost also the cost to everything obviously i wrote a thank you mail to him and never then went back to him because that was not my budget of mm-hmm. giving somebody a professional fee of 3 crores plus uh, so much of land so much of land and so many other expenses to do so um, that didn't happen and had to look for something locally and and that's when uh, we went out and uh, moved on to finding somebody locally and that's also a very interesting incident about how i found the actual golf architect uh, who did this uh, late colonel uh, krishna dev bagga kd bagga designed our golf course uh, for us he is the one who also did the kensville uh, uh, as far as so he was uh, the one uh, okay who did it but the whole story uh, happened in a way where i didn't know how to uh, reach out to whom so locally where to go what to do so pranav and i had a brilliant idea because we used to keep exchanging mm. notes and he said okay let's write to golf digest india so there used to be a magazine called golf digest india and we said let's write a email to golf digest india saying that we want to do a golf club in the city of amdavad and could you recommend a local golf architect mm. so we write a mail and their editor writes back uh, to pranav now pranav writes a mail as if he's alpesh okay so he writes uses my email id writes a mail through me and i get a reply and there's a reply which says that Yeah, there are these two people. One is this gentleman, the other is this. But I would recommend Mr. K. D. Bagga, and uh, you should speak to him. So I'm super excited. So I call up uh, Colonel Bagga. I'm in Bangalore at that point in time at uh, uh, Karnataka Golf Association. I'd gone to see. I'm staying overnight in Bangalore, and I call him up and I say, 
Sir, I'm uh, again an amateur golfer from Ahmedabad. I want to build a golf club. Right now in Bangalore, I've come here to see so and so. And I can take a midnight flight also if you want, and I can see you tomorrow morning. So he said, can no, but I can't see you tomorrow. I said, Mari, just hello. Pellad sir, na thi chalu thay. So apna to project nahi thay. So pellad manas koi ha ke van bhai pellad na ke sir. He said, Nana sir, I have to come. Ab bolo, me aaj aata hu, kal aata hu. Time nahi hai, to Monday aata hu. So he said, no, you are on Tuesday. I said, no, sir, I am not in Ahmedabad. He said, you have seen Elizabeth Gym? I said, yes, sir. He said, do you want to have breakfast in the morning? I said, okay, sir. I said, what are you doing? I said, I am coming, my project is going. Which one? I said, I said, Kenswell. And that's when I come to know that, oh, the whole circle around that Kenswell is the one which is being done by Colonel Bagga. And I go back, have breakfast with Colonel Bagga, tell him that, sir, this is what I want to do. He said, let's go to the site. I show him the place. He said, "Okay, but first, golf academy. We make golf course. After that, you should first get people to learn how to play golf before you, you know, make a golf club." I said, "That also makes uh, sense." So we first design a 13 bay driving range. Come a golf academy is designed and built first. Parallelly, we start making the golf course. Obviously, we're entrepreneurs, so uh, golf is one thing. We keep thinking about real estate yes, yes, and construction, so we start. Uh, acquiring more land in and around and start developing those facilities as well one after the other and and yeah things started happening from that point in time but even our name um, is something uh, if you have time i would like to share about absolutely i was going to ask you the question regardless that the gurjari golf and uh, gurjari club and resort changed to gulmohar how did that happen so i'll tell you that's a very interesting story about this as well so i come back from uh, gir and one weekend we are about five friends who are very close and we all meet up at one someone's house over a saturday night and generally you know chit chatting perhaps have a drink or you know play board games or something so one of the nights we all meet up uh, just after returning from gear and i i sort of send a message to all the friends before and saying that boss ajek no drink nothing and we're going to have some very serious discussion i need your help so we meet up and i tell them boss listen i'm venturing into this thing i'm setting up a golf club so all are excited to golf golf you know like of course a new sport we're all sports person all our lives so everybody is excited about a new sport to play and learn and i said but i need to name this place and i said we have to figure out how do we name it and i said i want to be honest to my members my guests so i think we have to call it countryside so wherever we have to use the word countryside because it's a countryside club Correct. i am not in, in the, the city, city. center So we said, okay, we'll use the word country, and uh, I said we have to obviously use word golf. So we said, okay. So we said golf and country club, and then a very dear friend Ami comes up and says uh, Pranav's wife, and mm. she says that Alpesh, you have to use greens because it's going it's to be all green. green around. So we said, okay, let's say dash greens golf and country club. So so far we're all uh, sort of sold on that idea. In those next two three hours, we're all okay that we'll call it dash greens golf and country club. But we don't get the first name, so we start googling a lot of uh, golf courses across mm -hmm. the globe and figure, trying to figure out how do people name golf courses, and in India also how are the courses named. So we came up and found DLF. Now that's a big real estate brand, so that's why they could call themselves the DLF. Correct. We couldn't call ourselves Parik Developers because Correct. that was no brand so big that you could put that mm -hmm. name as like that. So we said, okay, this can't happen, and and then we figured out that there's Eagleton. There's an Eagleton Golf and Country Club in Bangalore. Now it's Eagleton because lots of eagles come there. So I said, okay, that's why local about that place because a lot of eagles are on the golf course. Right. So that's why it's called Eagleton. Now what's that local about us? There's what do we call ourselves? आपने कि CB सहित नहीं Jali Golf Club कहीं है because that's local of Ahmedabad or Manchester of Ahmedabad. Uh, because of textile mills. So textile yeah. mills. So should we call something like that? Nothing made sense. And uh, It was about April. By that point in time, uh, March and April is where we were in, and a couple of days, weeks went by, post getting this many words in place. And I remember one morning, I just woke up, normal. You get ready, leaving for work. I was leaving for work, and we had this beautiful tree right outside on the main road uh, where I used to earlier stay at Parimal Garden. That tree is still there, and I had this beautiful flower on the road. And that was a Gulmohar flower. I said, "Wow, this is." I remember getting out of the car, picking up the flower, taking a picture, and sending it to Niyatin, saying, "And to Pranav, and saying, 'Kebas, why not Gulmohar Greens Golf and Country Club?'" 
we are on tropic of cancer very close to tropic of cancer so our weather is very tropical mm -hmm. gulmohar is a tropical uh, plant so we we are not finding any birds but we at least have a tree which is this it's a very vibrant red color flower that's what we want to be mm. and it it sort of signifies everything that we are so why not call ourselves gulmohar greens golf and country club and everybody was excited yeah this name sounds uh, perfect run it through dad dad is excited that yeah why not so we immediately i call in my company secretary and say uh, gupta ji naam change karte hai ye gurjari nahi chahiye apne gulmohar greens golf and country club uh, karte hai aur that time in papa said usko we have to make it a private club private club so we make it change the name from gurjari to gulmohar greens golf and country club Pri private limited which was later on changed to limited we even remove the private out of it uh, okay uh, some 6 8 months down the line but that's how it was named as gulmohar greens and it was only after i met colonel bagga that i rem i recall my first meeting with him on that morning at elizabeth gymkhana when i drove him to show the site told him about the plans spoke to him about the project and um, he said ke everything is good all paper aap jante ho ki gulmohar is the only tree you cannot plant on a golf course i said what <laughs> Said, yeah, because we so so we'll have have so have much cleaning to to do on the golf course. You you cannot plant a a over there. You have to have a tree which will not shed. Right. I said, true sir, wo kabhi strike hi hua, ki we can't have a name. So while we are Gulmohar Greens, we do not have a Gulmohar tree inside the golf course. We have about 100, 200 trees outside the in the community golf, in the community outside the golf course at the club site, but nothing inside. So because it's a tree, you can't just Crazy. plant um, inside the golf. Course. But, of course but it's unreal how this whole idea got evolved and it actually took shape in the city in which so many people are enjoying and taking pride in uh, in this development today and it just came out of a fight between you and Neeti Ban it's just True. unreal amazing story obviously thanks to uh, uh, your friend uh, Pranav, Pranav bhai also for like you know pointing you out uh, towards uh, that direction and Absolutely. you went and saw that golf course is amazing story now because of the development of this uh, this uh, golf uh, the, the the gulmohar club there there is a lot of other development coming around and you have been uh, playing a pivotal role in developing the entire uh, geography uh, around uh, the club tell us the what future holds for this uh, locality so i tell you anand uh, basically any real estate which is safe secured will always have great returns that will happen while we started gulmohar greens nobody looked at this village kolat or sanathal for years to come and Correct. hence we could enjoy a monopoly for a good 8 10 years before somebody in covid times realized that this is one uh, patch of land mm -hmm. which is so close to the city of amdabad and nobody ever eyed it at all and when lot of new investments started coming up in this area we ourselves went up doing uh, not only finish gokul rindavan that we were doing we ended up doing some eight nine schemes within that community uh, seven within the community two outside mm -hmm. our 600 acre project so our 150 acre project ended up growing to about 600 so today gulmohar wow. greens is a 600 acre uh, gated community right in which we have done schemes like gokul rindavan gulmohar enclave 1 enclave 2 gulmohar enclave 3 gulmohar enclave 4 and gulmohar enclave 5 which we just about recently uh, completed in addition to this we also did gulmohar nx1 and gulmohar nx2 which are just about 400 meters and a kilometer mm -hmm. away from the club and we still hold on to about close to over 100 acres of land within that 600 which is yet to be developed so we've nice. not even Uh, and done any infrastructure or development in that area but beyond us today there are more than about 10 other uh, real Developers. estate uh, players who have come in and around this space and have started developing uh, residential homes in a very big way this area itself if you look at it is just about 9 10 kilometers from the gates of kanavati club so the gate of gulmohar to gate of kanavati club is exactly 10 kilometers on the dot mm -hmm. if you were to put your Uh, meter to zero on the dot of ten, you will enter the gates of Gulmohar. Correct. So it's really no distance at all. And today people measure uh, distance by mm. uh, not time. by kilometers, by but by time. And right. because these roads and everything is growing up so fast, this particular area, the whole of uh, area between Gokul Dam 
and Sanand is right now, which is developing very well and very fast, especially because of lots of uh, industries coming on the Changodar mm -hmm. side. Ahead of Sanand, we have so many industrial projects that are coming in, Maruti coming in, and so many other big players uh, playing a pivotal role in developing the industrial belt up there. This is the only residential space which is now left, which has great potential uh, to grow and give the best of housing uh, uh, option for somebody who is wanting to invest within a reasonable budget. You don't need to uh, pocket out 5 CR, 10 CR to come in here. You have a pocket size of uh, 1, 2 CR. You could probably have a nice decent house, a villa uh, in this uh, area and uh, have a very well uh, uh, space to live in. Especially in times of COVID or post-COVID and, and we're always at the threat of some or other mm -hmm. uh, new um, calamity um, around the corner. This gives us a great opportunity for people to come and invest and hence you're seeing so much of real estate uh, growth happening in this area. In fact, uh, I'm sure you've read today's newspaper that 10 new TP schemes in and around Sanand have now been uh, cleared, cleared correct. and, and Sanathal, Telav are among those. So we're expecting new roads to open up and things. So there's going to be even more uh, real estate push happening in, in this uh, area. So I think this is perhaps just the right time to come in here before these roads open up. Otherwise, it's going to still keep uh, shooting the prices up. Absolutely. Now. now I'm seeing a lot of people building their first home straight. They're not even looking at it as a weekend home uh, location. Like so many people are building their first homes uh, right there at, uh, around uh, your uh, golf course. Absolutely. What has happened is that Gulmore, while we never thought that will become a landmark in itself, but for the amount of hard work and passion through which we've created uh, this whole uh, club, gives a great opportunity for anybody to come within the circle uh, periphery of another four or five kilometers because it offers every possible piece of uh, luxury for anyone who is within that 5-7 kilometer yeah. uh, perimeter and, and that's what people want because when you are staying somewhere you want um, for your children a good school to go to now there are multiple good schools which Correct. have come up uh, within that area um, you want your child perhaps when they grow up to learn swimming to learn some sport Gulmar offers each and every sport uh, from tennis, badminton, squash, billiards, table tennis there's gym, aerobic, swimming there are children parks to play wedding destination, multiple restaurants to go to. So, you know, that's uh, uh, landscape areas to be around. So, anyone who wants uh, to have a good house, these are now become the most preliminary areas. I mean, even today when you go out and sell your real estate, um, we generally look at green spaces. We target sure. to open to greenery, to a garden. So, you know, that's, that's what people want and Gulmore offers that a plenty. And in fact, even the amount of real estate we have done, uh, all said and done, we have done about close to 600 plots that we've uh, had in and around there. And more than about 150 families who have moved in uh, and who are staying there using this, uh, at least three-fourths of them using it as first homes. Brilliant. And that's just providing a complete ecosystem for somebody who's looking to live at uh, that locality. Uh, tell me, Alpesh Bhai, you achieved this huge milestone of creating uh, this golf club. After that, you went on to pursue your executive MBA True. to Harvard. What was the thought process? Very commendable though. From my side, I would say it is very impressive. But what was your thought process of doing that? And I've always been someone who likes to keep learning. Even today, if I uh, tell you, um, I had a class uh, just uh, over the weekend. So right now, my new passion is to learn how to fly an aircraft. So that's what I'm learning. Wow. But um, Coming back to Harvard days, uh, when I finished my engineering, I always wanted to go and do a uh, post-graduation. Like, you know, almost anybody who does engineering or one graduation, you want to do an MB or something. That was the way life used to be in the mid-90s. Um, my mother was very adamant that, nah, papa ni umar thegi, you have to start working and, you know, you better get on and, and go to office. Mm -hmm. So I joined work, uh, obedient son, Get gets on to doing it. So that always that um, urge was that that I want to learn more. I want to learn more. And it so happened that I was playing golf with a senior vice president of Citibank one of the days at Gulmore, and this was back in 2010, in all probability or 11, 2010, mm -hmm. 11. And I was playing golf with him, and we were just discussing various career perspectives and what I intend to do with Gulmore and mm -hmm. other things. And 
and he happened to tell me that you know what alpesh i've just finished this executive course uh, at uh, harvard business school and why don't you take a plunge uh, it's not easy to get in in those days about 1000 people would apply about 100 105 10 would actually end up getting admission i said give it a shot i mean you you have the right uh, built up you already have 10 plus years of experience in what you're doing give it a shot and you know do it and it it should help you and i said yeah why not i mean this is something which i always wanted to do i know it's too late in life now to go out and do a two year uh, mba program but an executive mba sort of fits the bill because i would be on campus off, off campus. campus i'll still be studying for good 9 10 11 months but uh, i don't have to be on campus so i could you know run my business as well as uh, study uh, on the sidelines and it so happened that um, after this brief discussion with him i happened to travel to usa uh, for my nephew's graduation which was in boston he was graduating at babson mm-hmm. and i tell this friend of mine that could you fix me up with someone a program coordinator or someone mm-hmm. and i could go and meet them and you know understand more per se and i take up an appointment of this lady called debora and i go and meet her um, at harvard business school um, the meeting was supposed to be for 20 minutes we keep talking for an hour or so she tells me everything about various programs which would be the right fit for mm-hmm. me why should i do it not do it and and we go through a lot of other details as well and i come back fill up a form and uh, send it out uh, with the fees to the Harvard Business School and I keep waiting that I get an interview call because mm. those time there used to be a interview because they would not just get you in once you they receive a form right. with your non refundable deposit they'll do a online interview with you and if you pass that you will be enrolled and if you fail you lose the deposit mm. which you've given and I never got a call for uh, an interview and at some point in time I started feeling that perhaps I'm not even good enough to you know uh, qualify for that qualify for this and i said let me just write to debora since i know her so i put in a sweet mail to debora and asking her that hey listen i haven't got this i think perhaps you guys have missed out or i don't know but could you update me so that i know if i have to make some mm-hmm. other alternative plans if not this then something else if i wish to pursue um, out here because at that point in time i am was also about to start with some uh, executive programs and she said no but alpesh we've already selected you you should get a um, a confirmation uh, email very soon i said but you never took an interview mm. he said why i met you no in person that was your interview and i said oh okay so that is what i was the thing when i met and i was lucky enough to just uh, scrape through into it and uh, had some brilliant friends whom i could make over those uh, four uh, modules that i did mm-hmm. in that particular session for program for leadership development it opened up me from living in a um, i would say in a well to be thrown into an ocean um, the way the thought process of what we could do in life how things move around was very conservative i would say till that point in time and it it sort of made me aware that there are so many other opportunities or there are so many disruptive ways of doing business i don't have to do it uh, in a in, in a traditional way there are hundred ways of disrupting the market and and um, you could still come out uh, of it the way just stronger. you want it to be more stronger and uh, with a lot of uh, uh, experience and and I I really loved it and I would highly recommend to people to go out and do such executive courses brilliant um alpesh bhai you if you have been also like you know while you you've been developing your business and growing yourself financially and uh, uh, like you know inside out you have always been associated with lot of ngos if you can just quickly tell us about how you are affiliated with which kind of ngos before i tell you about the ngos i'll tell you something uh, anand i come in from a we come in as a family come in from a very modest background my uh, my father wasn't born someone with a silver spoon mm-hmm. my mother was but my father wasn't and uh, we were brought up in a very modest way so something that i have ingrained uh, from my childhood from my parents is uh, a uh, few things which will always stay is honesty hard work and integrity to whatever we do and um, hence today when whatever little i've been able to make a uh, name fame in whatever work i have been doing over the last so many years it always comes in very naturally to go and give back uh, to whom ever you can now whether it's mentoring children so i keep mentoring a lot of students from edi at times from iim or whosoever just walks in 
few startups i help in mentoring them so i keep doing that as a parallel thing if i can be of any help to someone i also slowly and gradually realized that uh, there are not so many people who are as fortunate as we are and if we could give something back to them uh, there can be no more pleasure than doing that so we started this so uh, called something called gulmor india education foundation wherein we give education to all those people who stay in and around gulmor uh, in the campus they could be working for me they may not be working for me they could be a house help for someone else's uh, place and they've got no connection to mm -hmm. gulmor as a club but if they have a a son or a daughter and if they need some form of uh, education we bring them in so today we have close to about 65 70 young uh, students who come to our school we run a proper school a proper classroom school where we have three teachers now who come and uh, teach them so this could be from a kindergarten to somebody even in the 5th 6th 7th 8th grade also and in fact i have a product of this school where we have three people now who have become our supervisors their parents were our laborers who used to work with us as laborers and their children are now supervisors working with us uh, still so we try and do that we give them education we've just about started a computer lab now for them so now we started teaching them we've invested in few two or three computers and we started teaching them a uh, computer we also try and see that we can get these children to participate with the common stream so for example if we were to have a drawing competition at gulmor uh, we would have this school children also participating in that drawing competition so there wow. would be a special prize for them but they'll still get to participate in that Very this nice. children would also go and get to play at the same children park where the other members are playing but they'll have limited access once in a month they'll get to go and play but they'll still get to go and enjoy the same facilities which a normal no, uh, a child your and my children could probably go and do so we try to keep pushing them towards bringing them to showcasing them mm -hmm. what the actual world is all about and we also post fifth grade put them in the local schools uh, within the village so that they can officially give the exams uh, out there and also use us as tuition classes so that's one ngo that i've been very passionate and we've been working on is uh, gulmor india education foundation we also run something called uh, the india renal foundation the irf where uh, neeti uh, and my father trilok bhai both have been very actively pursuing um, and running the india renal foundation I am personally associated with the Ahmedabad Red Cross so I am uh, the joint secretary at Ahmedabad Red Cross and trying to see if anybody ever has the need for blood thalassemia patients uh, wow. we try and uh, work with those uh, as much as we can so yeah it's been quite an interesting journey so far and and giving back uh, whatever little way we could uh, to the society it's always been a pleasure doing that that's so nice of you Alpesh bhai it's been truly a pleasure talking to you your journey has been super exciting and uh, i did not know genuinely where the time went by having this conversation with you thank you so very much to come to the office thank you and Anil, have this I, I absolutely i had a pleasure talking about it and i i love reliving my own moments so thank you for giving me that opportunity to relive all this absolutely i can imagine thank you thank you so very much thank ladies and gentlemen thank you for being with us through this conversation i hope you enjoyed this uh, part of uh, track podcast with mr alpesh parik Uh, for such podcasts keep following us uh, on uh, instagram and on facebook our handles are the real estate connect trec both on insta and facebook thank you very much and have a great day